Hey everyone, Dr. Gary Linkoff here of City Facial Plastics in New York City. I'm a hair transplant surgeon and facial plastic surgeon as well. Make sure if you like this video and this whole series of hair transplant videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much. Now I want to talk to you about kind of what the day looks like when you come in for a hair transplant. At least in my office, I assume it's fairly similar in other offices. You know, I wanted to kind of share that insight and also what the recovery is like when you leave the office. When you come in, I ask people to bring in their medications usually will prescribe a sedative or two like Valium Ambien will prescribe an antibiotic that you take first pill in the morning second pills when you get home and then you take it for a few days to prevent infection there's also a steroid prednisone that helps reduce the amount of inflammation that you get and those are pretty much the the uh, medications and also a uh, Percocet for after after surgery very few people need a narcotic after surgery but i like people to have it as an option if they were to have any worsened pain and especially that first night it can be useful to to take you know something a little bit stronger to help you go to sleep and you know not be too uncomfortable but with day two you're already much more comfortable so we do the medications in the morning we have to get through the consent forms you know all that kind of stuff we have to take photos we have to discuss you know where are we putting hairs kind of finalize the plan even though we've talked about that during the consultation again day of we got to talk about it again finalize kind of everything for for the transplant we'll do the shaving if we're doing a shave approach fue if we're not then, then there's no shaving involved then the first part of the day is extracting the hair so either with a strip which again i rarely do in my practice that's the FUT method. And more commonly, it's the FUE, where we're taking out hairs one by one. So for that, most of the time, we're taking hairs from the back of the head. So you're going to be on your belly, face down into a special kind of pillow where you can, you know, easily breathe and it's a very comfortable, comfortable chair. And you'll be that way for anywhere from one to three to four hours, depending on how many grafts we need to extract. Of course, the more grafts we're extracting, the longer you're going to be on your belly. You can take breaks. You can go to the bathroom. You know, if you need a of water no problem you're taking the medications to make you more calm but you're still aware of what's going on some people will doze off and sleep a little bit that's totally fine once the numbing is in we have to put numbing into the scalp or wherever we're extracting from so that you don't feel the pain once that's in it's a very comfortable process you'll hear a little sound from the machine that's used to extract the hairs but overall you know it's it's not really a bother so we have to get the hairs out then we'll usually break for lunch if it's a longer procedure if it's not a long procedure if we are doing fewer number of grafts, like a couple hundred, say for the eyebrows, we'll kind of jump right into the planting process and, and the recipient site making. But if it's a longer surgery, we'll break for lunch, everyone eats, the whole team will eat, the patient will eat, and then we'll come back and we'll start with numbing the front of the head if we're doing the front or wherever we're working, say we're doing a beard, we'll start numbing the beard area. And once we have that numb, then we can make all those recipient sites and then we can plant the grafts. And I tell people for the longer surgery, that you know involve a, a you know, number of graphs like over say 1500 graphs I mean you're here all day long you know it's 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 a full day come in at say 7 a.m. leave around 5 p.m. sometimes even longer I tell people it takes as long as it takes you know there are times when certain parts might take a little longer they might be a little more technically challenging we stay as long as we need to to get the job done then let's say we did a, a typical kind of scalp case we'll clean everything up we'll put antibiotic ointment on the donor area and on the recipient area will basically make sure all the grafts are, are nicely placed nice and, and flat and that they're not sticking out and at risk of falling out so we'll, we'll tuck them in clean things up so there isn't you know any obvious like bleeding and then we'll put a beanie over the area and then usually you walk out with a hat we'll give you a hat so a beanie and a hat when you get home you take the hat off you don't carefully you don't want to rub the hairs the new grafts off so you take the hat off through a little velcro through thing in the back take that off the beanie can stay on until the next day then the following day you have a spray that we give you that has that same holding solution that we use to keep your graft so it has the plasma light and the ATP and you can start spraying the recipient area every hour to really just kind of keep it moist keep it from drying out after 48 hours from surgery you can take a bowl of water and in the shower put warm water in there 
pat some shampoo on very carefully without no rubbing, just pat and then hold the bowl over your head and let the bowl you know, run down and you can sort of wash your hair in that way. No regular shower, but in the bath, you can do that with the bowl of water. Then at day six, at day six is when you can finally shower and let the current hit the scalp without sort of worrying. And that's also why you shouldn't really work out in that first week because if you generate sweat, you can little hairs can potentially fall out after about 24 hours it's rare for the hairs to fall out but you know we want to stay as safe as possible and then once you start showering at day six you're going to want to work out all the little crust that you see with shampoo by rubbing the area and just taking showers every day till you rub the, out all the crust and you want to get them out ideally within the first two to three weeks during that time within you know at about the two to three week window you'll have little shafts of hairs where we place the little tiny stubby hairs, most of those shafts will fall out. So if you see that happening, don't be alarmed. They shouldn't be coming out with the actual bulb, but just the actual, you know, hair that's coming out of the skin. It's very common for it to fall out. And then you have to be patient. You have to give it about three to six months before you start to notice the hair growth. Okay, so a lot of people get anxious at three months, they don't see anything. It's okay, give it time, wait. It can take up to sometimes seven or eight months to start to see the hair grow in because of the hair cycle. Once the hair starts to grow in, usually the, the full growth is at about a year's time. I'll have patients do a, a video call with me at three weeks just to see how they're doing. And then I always have to check in with them, you know, in a, a day or two after surgery as well. Then we do a three week Follow up, and then we do a 10 month follow up in person, and that's when we really see ideally in person. Some people, you know, come travel from far away, but if we can in person, just to see the final state of the of the hair growth, it's a good time point to really get uh, an idea of how things are looking, how they're probably going to look, and then we see is there any need for additional touch up procedure, or are we happy? Is everything good? I'll never do any touch up work until that first year is up because a lot of times that hair still you know, continues to grow. That is sort of the recovery process. It's really not too uncomfortable. The day of, as well as the recovery post, most patients report a, a very good experience both during the surgery and after as well. Yeah, hopefully learn more about um, the actual process of a hair transplant and the recovery of it. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel.